witness, if you will, a handcrafted 5E3 amplifier made from components, joined by wires, constructed by a fellow YouTuber, Learn Electronics. A vintage design, malfunctioning, not a sound, nowhere to go. Confident in his case, Paul sent it to D-Lab for evaluation and hopefully repair. Now witness this man's creation put in the hands of another, a team effort. You have just entered the D-Lab zone. All right, before I install the tubes or power this unit up, we're gonna give it a good physical inspection. You see our power transformer, classic tone output transformer, front panel with the custom decals. Very nice. All right, let's flip it upside down, take a look at the chassis. All right, here's the back side of the amp. Rectifier tube goes here, a pair of 6v6s, our speaker jacks, and this is where your 12AX7s go. And yes, those are those 9-pin Chinese sockets that I have terrible luck with, so I'm sure I'll be changing those out. Let's take a look inside. All right, bottom side inspection of the 5E3 amp. We're going to give this a real careful look over, try to spot any problems. Power transformer. Got our primary leads here. High voltage leads going to the rectifier tube. Okay. Filament lines that go up and hit the lamp assembly. 100 ohm resistors for the balancing. So this side should be ground. But one thing I spotted right off the bat was there's some magic going on down here around the 6V6s. Okay. Got some aluminum foil, I believe, tape, which is wrapped around the grid feed wires, okay, obviously to reduce noise. You can see this one here is tied right down to the chassis, but then they swoop underneath the eyelet board and come up here. So that's a little bit alarming to me is that you'd have aluminum foil going underneath this eyelet board. Yes, this is the ground side, so the chances of it contacting the high voltage are probably slim, but it's still of concern. Okay, we've got our filter caps here, and this is a turret board that he used. These, I believe, are the Mallory 150 series coupling caps, so that's good. Got our filament lines here. The dressing isn't the best. I really don't like it over those speaker jacks, but I'll correct that later. Here are those 9-pin ceramic Chinese sockets. I've had a lot of problems with these, and you can see that the wiring on them is not in good shape. So we're going to have to redo all that, and I'll change these out with some Michaelex sockets. All right, let's tip her forward, take a look at our controls, and take a look at our input jacks. All right, here's our volume pots and tone pot, and I've noticed that there is a little bit of corrosion starting on these. I don't know if this guy lives near the coast. Or perhaps these pots got some moisture on them in the past. The grounding that I was looking at is kind of strange. You see these jumpers and then they're going up and grounding to the back of the pots. I normally set a stud and you'll see that on the fender layouts too. They'll have a ground stud where these wires are being pulled to the chassis. Okay. So all these multiple ground runners can cause some noise. So we're going to have to take care of that issue. The input jacks, I was kind of looking this over and I spotted something that was really strange, okay? So you got the one meg resistors and then this lead here should be your output side. This is your ground and this is the switched wiper arm, okay? But if you look, you got this side to ground and the output side is also going to ground. So that is more than likely why he didn't have any signal being transferred through this amp. I think it was being snubbed out right at the input jacks. So let's put a meter on this and verify if what I'm seeing is correct. All right, I've connected my multimeter on the input jack. So this is the ground side and this would be your signal side, okay? Normally, when you're not using the jack, this wiper arm was shorted, okay? So you can see on the, the multimeter, it is indeed shorted, okay? Now let's just take a plug and put it in. We should open up the wiper arm, remove the short, and you should see about a megaohm. 
guess what? It stays shorted. So yep, those jacks are miswired shorting out the input signal. That's an easy fix. We're just going to have to reroute wiring, get one set of grounds, and if we need this ground runner on the pots, we'll take that to chassis. Alright, so I just spotted something else that I really need to point out. And this is the reason that I inspect these things before I power them up, okay? If you look at the eyelet board, over here, you got a pretty good gap, right? It's sitting up on a spacer under that screw, but if you go over here, that eyelet board is right on the chassis. There's no gap. So it's strange that there's a spacer here. There's probably a spacer under that screw, but the board is pulled down and these terminals are touching chassis. Remember, this is your inputs off the jacks, right? So if those turrets are hitting chassis, it's going to short out the inputs once again. So, what's the plan of attack? I bet you guys know what it is. I'm going to have to gut it out and we're going to start over. So here we go. Pretty much going to gut it out. I'm going to remove the eyelet board, put in some new spacers, make sure it's insulated from the chassis. New tube sockets for these 212AX7s. Rewire and retest. Alright, the little 5V3 is gutted out. I'm going to check over the eyelet board, install some new 9-pin sockets, clean up all the wiring, put her back to stock. Alright, so what's the best course of action for D-Lab at this point? What is the most efficient way to repair this amp and make that customer happy? Put it back to stock. Fender designed this decades ago and it's still running today, okay? So what I'm going to do is put it back to stock configuration. I'm going to strip out everything in there. We're going to look everything over, make sure it's cool, put it back together, rewire it per the print. And I bet you it'll work just great. I have the turret board reinstalled with spacers and I added two more supports. There was only two to begin with. Four stabilizes the platform. I also added three chassis mount ground points. So I'm going to clean up this board, get the wiring straightened out, then I'll mount the tube sockets and the controls. I wrapped up the wiring on the turret board. Now it's time to get the controls and the tube sockets installed. Get all these little runners hooked up. Won't be long, I'll be powering it up. All right, progress report. I've got the Michael X nine pin sockets installed and wired and I color coded everything so it's real easy to follow now. This is our new filament line going over to the 6V6s. I cleaned up all the wiring in this area. Still have to wire up the speaker jacks and the input jacks. Getting really close. So the rewiring of the 5E3 is complete. I did not change any of the components on the turret board. I left those in place but I did verify their connections. You can see I tidied up a lot of the wiring. Input jacks now are just hardwired right to the resistors using 22 gauge bare conductor wire. I did the same thing with all the ground runners. So you'll see the ground runners back there. I have three tie points to the chassis. If you take a look at the 5 e 3 schematic you'll see Fender did the same thing. Okay, so let's take a look at the tube socket wiring. You remember what we had before. There's the nice Michael X sockets. The leads all color coded. I like to use red for the plates, black for the cathode, and white for signal. There's a new filament wiring. Speaker output jacks. The orange wire you see is a screen circuit going to the 6V6s. Yellows are the grids. And I tried my best to keep that routing as per the layout diagram that Fender chose. All right, I've got the tubes installed. I have checked them. The uh, inverter tube here, the 12AX7 was very weak, so I replaced that. It still has the 12AY7 on the input. So we are ready to power this thing up. So for the initial power up, I'm using a Variac. 
I've got my meter set up on a thousand volt scale. I want to monitor the high voltage. So I'm going to bring up my Variac, which you can't see. And I'm going to watch my current very carefully. Make sure I don't see any fluctuations, okay? See if our dial light comes on. Look, we're starting to build some high voltage. I do have a dummy load connected. I'm up to 50 volts input. See the light coming up. She's looking good. There's about 80 volts. And about 100 volts input. No signal applied. I'm just making sure that she comes up and flames don't start shooting out of it. Looks good. No arky sparkies. All right. It is time to connect a signal, put it on the scope. All right. For the initial test, I do not have a signal applied to the amp. We're powered up. High voltage is on. I'm just watching the output of the scope. Right now, the inputs are turned all the way down. I'm just looking to see if we have a lot of hum which we don't. She's super clean. Now I'm going to bring up the input channels. So here is the instrument input. Now I'm just looking to see if we have a bunch of static and noise. Now see there? All the way up, I'm getting a little bit of noise. You see that? Let me tap on the 12AY7. Yeah. Looks like the 12AY7 may be a little bit microphonic. I'll bring up the mic level. Same deal. See that noise? That would be haunting if you tried to play it. So let's change out the 12AY7. I believe I may have a good 12AX7 that we can substitute in at this time. All right, I found a nice 7025. There's full volume on that guy. Tap on it. Definitely not as microphonic as the 12AY7. So I'm going to recommend to the owner that he picks up a couple spares if that's the tubes that he wants to run. But in the meantime, I'll leave the 7025 in. All right, let's go ahead and get a signal into this guy. Using my leader generator, let's go into instrument one. So we're on instrument one. I'm injecting approximately 1000 hertz. There she is, I'm at one volt per division. Let's go over to the mic input. Okay. Looking good, clean, and symmetrical. So I guess at this point, it's ready for the speaker. And that's the true test. <laughs> Are you going? Yeah. Hi there. We're out in the shop at D-Lab. We're, uh, this is uh, Paul Zamp from Learn Electronics. Uh, Terry uh, had to kind of do a little rewiring on it. I don't know, there's probably a video or something of it you might oh, yeah. be able to find. Anyway, it's a real barky amp. It sounds really nice. I like it. Thank you.